welcome to Advisor Talk with Frank LaRosa. Brought to you by Elite Consulting Partners, it's the only podcast offering unfiltered guidance and direct advice for all things concerning financial advisors, RIAs, and the practitioners in the wealth management business. Learn more and subscribe today at EliteConsultingPartners.com slash podcast. And now, here's your host, Frank LaRosa. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Advisor Talk with Frank LaRosa. I am your host, Frank LaRosa. And once again, I'm joined by um, my left hand, most important person, uh, Stacey Frank, Executive Vice President of Sales for Elite Consulting Partners. So Hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy to be back, as always. Happy to be back. Um, it's a nice day out, and uh, we're both, I think, a little bit tired. We're casual uh, today. We're casual today. This yeah. is the casual series. Yeah, the casual Hair series. Up, yeah. Elite garb. You're in your uh, you're elite garb. You're in your like. Uh, Pickleball, like, pickleball yeah, outfit you, you, mode, right? Like you're about ready to go to a tournament. Yeah, <laughs> I'm ready. Miss tournament, she goes to pickleball tournaments, and you're getting on, you're getting closer to the top of the yeah. podium. Playing a national qualifier next month, July there you 15th. Go. Okay, so, awesome. See where it takes us. And uh, I was uh, at a uh, late night um, Hermes fashion show. How about that? Yes, I was at a fashion show. There's some there's uh, some commonalities there. Hermes fashion shows and pickleball. Yeah, total yeah, synergy. Maybe. Yeah. That's why we get along Not so well. Not too much pickleball <laughs> talk last night though. Um, anyway, I'm joking. So, <laughs> but we're doing a podcast uh, because we feel like it's important. We feel like uh, this is us paying it forward, um, even though um, we're both probably a little bit more tired. So we're going to do our best to give you a great show today. And today's topic is really um, I don't want to say a, a redo. Excuse me. A redo, but a, a, revisit. A, a revisit of um, this idea of the the importance of home office visits, and I think the reason why we're talking about this today is that there's been over the last few weeks or f- months or so, there's been some news with firms mandating that their their uh, home office, you know, their their work from home employees all within a certain range of the of their home office come back to the office, right? which is sort of now this pendulum swinging the other way from where we were with COVID. And it's I think that's relevant because if you're working at one of those organizations or you're running one of those organizations um, or you're a recruiter at one of those organizations, um, we, we sometimes forget the importance of why bringing a candidate to your home office is really, really important. Yeah, it's actually disappointing sort of where our our industry and our society has evolved with this work from home uh, mentality, which is great. There's so many reasons, especially for um, moms to be able to work from home and have that flexibility. However, the sad part is that with post COVID and all the technology and the remote um, appeal, if you will, um, we're losing some of that, that human uh, capacity, that human capital importance. Yeah, human touch. And, you know, we actually, well, we did, we did a hot mic podcast about the whole idea of coming back to work and all that good stuff. Oh, but right. I think when- That was impromptu. Right, exactly. We, you know, I will say shortly there, shortly after 2020, uh, when some firms started bringing people back, but it was sort of like a skeleton crew and they were doing home office visits. So I give them credit for doing that. They were virtual. That, well, you know? like I did several of them because I went on the trips with the clients and we would go down and we would travel to a location like we get on a plane, we'd spend our time, we'd go to the home office. And like, if we met like 10 people, right? Four of them were were in the office and the other six were remote. Even though they were like within a short distance away from the headquarters, they still just zoomed in. And, and then when you walked around the hallways, it was like a ghost town. Right. And that's and that's fine. But with making a transition with a decision that is can be disruptive and is such a milestone decision, it's still money aside, the people that you're going to be working with, that's going to be supporting your business. That's that's really most important long term. So if you're not going to meet those people and get to know them, then you're making a decision without really, you know, checking all the boxes. Right. The other thing, if you're willing to do this and set up a home office for clients, and if you're an advisor and you're thinking about making a move, you should take these firms up on their offers when they do offer it, uh, because it's a way for you to interview them. It's a way for you to look at the culture. Um, I used to talk about some of the wires. And if you, I won't name names, but um, there was one wire in particular where you used to go through the hallways and it was like a morgue. 
Like no one, depressing. no one talked to each other. Nobody made eye contact. It just wasn't a great place to go. And then you go to a firm, and I'll say like Raymond James, who's sort of been renowned for their home office visits that's been written up before. And you go there and everybody's talking to each other. And, you know, you go to the cafeteria and everyone's in there hanging out and there's an energy there. And, and you know, there's, there's just a lot going on. And you get a feel for what the environment is going to be like for like, to say to your point, for the people that are servicing you when you're an advisor there, what's their attitude like? Are they happy at the firm that they're working for or not? Right. And sometimes questions and ideas pop up just because you're in, in the presence of other people. And maybe you're you're watching, uh, you know, the back office team or the technology team or the advisory team doing their thing and helps jog a question for you versus just, you know, getting to know those folks virtually. I think yeah. there's a component that's that's why we come to the office, because how much osmosis and idea sharing goes on. Yeah. And you can't predict it. Right. It's more the impromptu we, stuff. We were able to on one visit um, with Raymond James, uh, again, different different client. But uh, this particular f- group had a large fixed income um, book. And so we were able to go to the fixed income desk and actually they were actually able to sit and talk with the people that were going to that they were going to be trading with. And it was it was just great. And they so sort of went down these rabbit holes of different bonds and strategies and but it gave them a real sense of oh okay i can really do business here i can really handle my ultra high net worth clients with large positions are going to be taken care of here um, and you can't get that you know maybe they could have put that person on a zoom call right but it's not the same as when you're sitting right next to somebody right the practical experience right um you get to judge somebody or the team by sitting there that you can't do just from a TV screen or even right. just a phone call. Yeah. Now, the other thing that I see, um, and for those firms that do do home office visits, it's not just good enough just to do the visit, right? It's what does that experience look like? And I've been on some visits where we've gone back to back at firms, meaning we've gone to one firm and then we've flown directly to another firm. Wow, that's like a lot of information. <laughs> back to back, right? It's, it's right, but it was they wanted to make their decision within in a short period of time. We needed to do that, and the experience from the one firm to the other firm was totally different. These were multi million dollar producers, and one firm was sort of I'll call it just white glove, right? Was picked up at the airport by by a car, sort of like an Uber, not an Uber, but nowadays the Uber. But they had a car service there, ready for the ready for the client. The hotel was was taken care of. When they checked into the hotel, there was a little package there for them, like a welcome. Because you're, you know, the firms. If, if you're a firm doing this, you're you're asking these advisors to take two two to three days out of their business to come and spend time with you, and they don't even know if they want to be there. So um, this particular firm was able to sh- show them a little bit of appreciation for them doing that, and then and then the course of the day was handled the right way, meaning. Um, on the agenda, the firm name, the practice name, I should say not the firm name, but the practice name was on the agenda, on all of the information, on the slides. Um, there was, when we when they pulled up examples of a client's statement, the practice name was on the statement. All of the details to give the advisor a feeling of what it's going to be like and that this firm takes care of the details. As you know, I say, like how you do one thing is how you do everything. And as, as the consultant to these particular clients, I point that stuff out. Yeah, and I think that if if a firm isn't doing those things and making it a vital part of the decision-making process, then you might want to ask the question, you know, well, how, you know, how sophisticated are, are the folks? Or are there, is there really a team for every area? Right. You know, like maybe bring up some of the teams that are, that our advisor audience would want to, when they go on and on a home office visit, who would they want to meet with? Like, who would be like, absolutely, you have to meet with this team because of all these reasons. Right, yeah, you you need to know what's important to you as an advisor. So when you go down to the, when you spend your time, it's useful, right? Um, you know, sometimes I, I, I have advisors that wanna go to a firm because they wanna go to the location, right? And they're maybe not taking it all that seriously, but ha- but even having a home office visit is a way to weed weed people out too, right? If someone's not willing to go on a on a visit, maybe they're not as serious right. as they say they are. They're not right? as invested, right? Yeah. And that doesn't mean that's a blanket statement, right? Because 
because we've moved a lot of clients, a lot of advisors to different firms that never go on a home office visit, right? And that's and that was before before COVID and after COVID. So it's right. not like a thing that's changed. Um, but I do feel like if if whenever you have the opportunity, getting on a plane, spending your time, and and kicking the tires of these firms is really really important because you really only want to make this move one time. Um, you know, there could be some outside reasons why. Um, you have to do it down the road again, but um, ultimately all things being equal, meaning the firm doesn't change hands or stuff like that, right? Um, you don't want to, you don't want to do this more than once. And so take the time to do the due diligence. And, and again, as a firm, if I can speak to the firms out there, um, be respectful of the of the advisor's time and you know don't serve them food on paper plates. Or plastic silverware. Or plastic silverware. Plastic, like, plasticware. Well, plasticware. Yeah, plasticware. There's, there's really fancy, nice like silverware <laughs> that's like a plastic. But, right. Um, but I've been to home office visits where, and this one particular where we went from one to the other. The example was then we went to the other when we went to the to the second visit. It was like a, a like a box lunch that you'd get at the like the like in a paper cardboard like, box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It yeah, was like a, in a paper cardboard box. Good. That's not good. Um, like you got at the cart, at the food truck downstairs, <laughs> right? And like just bottled waters, right. like regular, not even like nice bottled water or or with, with the logos on it or anything like that. And then it was like those, you know, like the, when you get a spork, you know, in a plastic. Oh, those the, are awful. The, but it's like, They're it was a break off. But it was in a, it was like in the little package. <laughs> Right, like the so, you know the plastic package with one little napkin in it. Yeah, and a spork. And this was a multi million dollar team, and this is how they got treated. And right. and then when the firm, when the when I had to tell the firm that um, our client wasn't interested anymore, um, they couldn't understand why that mattered. Well, it's a service. It's a service factor, right? Exactly. Like if if a firm take pays attention to certain little details like that that seem irrelevant. You know, what are they doing to the some of the details as it pertains to your practice? Yeah, right. You know, are they your more negligent? Like your commissions. Right. If uh, the, like, if the firm isn't bucks. paying attention to those little things, what makes you think that they're going to get the details of your commissions right? So, again, it's the it's how you how you do one thing is how you do everything. And I liken it to I, I don't want to I'm trying to I'll say this without trying to sound crude in any way. Right. But um, it's like dating. Right. Like. It's if the somebody, courtship. It's the courtship. And right. if someone is not on their very best behavior, right, when you're dating, what's it going to be like when you get married, right? right? Or when you move in with each other maybe first and, and then you get married. And so it's your opportunity to see what that's going to be like. And I've seen firms just blow it. Um, on the flip side, I had a situation with a large team of uh, more north of $5 million team. And they were more or less decided on the firm that they were going to go to. And they decided to do a home office visit with the other firm. Um, in this case, it was LPL. And they went to the home office visit and they went a little bit reluctantly, like, okay, we're going to do this, you know, but we're probably going to go to the other firm. And by the end of the meeting, they were blown away because in this particular case, um, LPL brought out all the guns. They brought out everybody into their credit. They listened to me and took my advice about like not having people like virtual, right? Like unless they're in San Diego, because we were in Fort Mill this time. So like senior le leadership, if someone, you know, like I think in that case, Rich Steinmeier was part of the agenda, but he's in California, right? So he zoomed in, that, that kind of thing, right? Uh, but everybody else was in the room. Right, senior leadership. I mean, that's in the, huge. In the room. Their transition person team in the yep. room. Yep. Right? The financial planning person in the room. Marketing. The marketing in the room. Did you um, say transition already? Transitions, Transitions right? right. Like their transition person in the room. In this case, they went to the strategic wealth service model. And so the team leader for that practice was in the room. Right. Right? That Sitting right volumes. there. Right? That speaks volumes, especially as as a service standpoint. I could see the pressure that my clients were th were feeling about this whole idea of making the move. I could see the pressure subside as they realized, oh, okay, they got this. Right. Well, it's not just us talking about, oh, 
you know, Joe is part of that team and Tom is part of that team and Sue is part of that team, you're actually meeting those people yeah. just creates a better visual, a better level of comfort yeah, for right. the advisor to say, wow, I could I could really go to that firm. I can see it. I can visualize it. And I it's a, now I'm building trust it's a with weird, those people. It's a weird thing. Like, yeah. even though you do a Zoom call, like you can do a Zoom call and have all those people on there. There it's is this totally different. sense that um, they're just some person like behind some door at some in, in some location, some obscure location, right? Versus when they're sitting right there. Right. Like, oh, you're, I'm a, just, I'm joking, but like, oh, you're a real person, right? right? <laughs> Like it's a, I don't know how to try to describe it, but that's how I feel sometimes when I meet with somebody, um, you know, like we've had, we just did our conference um, recently and we have a lot of people that are remote at our firm and, and you see them and some people are new, but then when you get together with them for the first time in person, it's a different feeling. Well, it deepens the relationship. Right. And I won't list names, but there were probably three or four um, attendees from firms that came to our conference that we've been working with for six years. Oh, yeah. I've never met them in person. The level of our relationship and the trust and the excitement that we have to work together now totally changed. Yeah. All within just one day. So that's the experience that an advisor can have yeah. when they attend a home office visit. I can't I can't stress it enough. Right. So so listen, I think we, you, you get the idea. Right. Um, if you are a firm trying to recruit advisors, and again, whether it's an independent firm or whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, if you're if you're a retail branch manager, one of the things I used to do as a branch manager is made sure that I got the advisor in my office and showed them the actual office they were sitting in, sort of, so they started to feel like it was their furniture in the in the office, right? And they started to see themselves visually there. When I would say, "Listen, here's where your desk is." Here's your couch. We can move it around. If you want to put pictures up here, we can do this or do that. I started getting to see themselves at the firm. So yep. you can still do that if you're a local manager um, at a firm. Um, you know, again, if you're an RIA, it, it, you know, you need to be doing that. I would say even if you're, especially if you're an RIA and you're trying to recruit advisors, because that's that that's an unknown, right? A lot of advisors feel like. RIAs are an, are an anomaly to some degree to, to a lot of people. And if you can get them to your office location where they see like, oh, it's like us as an example. So we have a good size firm. And uh, some of the comments we get when uh, people come to our office, the, the office that we're in here right now, if, and if you're not watching us on, on uh, video, you should go to our YouTube channel because we have, you'll see us on video. Um, but the comment that, that we frequently get is, oh, wow, this is like a real firm. And it's not like an insult, but they're surprised because we have so many people in this location and they feel the energy and they feel people working and they see people on the phone. Right, and, they see how we interact with each other. Right. They see how, you know, uh, us management folks, right. you and myself and some of our other uh, management team, people were saying, wow, I, I always see you guys on Zoom, but now I got to see how you interact with each other. And wow, it makes me even more excited to be right. working with you and for you. And they want to do business with us. Right. And it's no different if you're trying to recruit advisors to your firm um, or employees, right? Uh, if you're trying to bring on somebody that's really good, you need to do the same same thing. Um, we, we do that a, a lot of times as well. Um, if you're an advisor thinking about making a transition, I would tell you that you need to expect to do this with at least two of the three firms, you know, maybe yeah. two firms, three firms, maybe, you know, if, you, if you're talking to five or six firms, you don't necessarily need to do that with five or six firms, right? Yeah, that's you're going to boil that down to your top two, maybe three. Um, we had one client uh, a, a while back did did three visits, um, four visits, actually. Um, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot. But, um, but look, it was necessary, right? But I think with our help and our guidance, yeah. we can really get that large funnel narrowed down yeah. so that you don't you won't feel the need to visit five firms. We'll narrow it down to two or three that come pretty darn close right. to what you're looking for. Right. So those would be the two that yeah, spend the, the time. And the idea there is we help you get down to the, let's call it two firms, that at either firm you're going to be happy and you're going to be successful at, right? At, at either firm. we're not. It's not going to be like, like you have two choices. One is a really good firm and one isn't, right? It'll be pretty close. It'll be pretty close. Right. By that point, it's pretty close. By that point, some of the economics are probably also very close because we probably negotiated a lot there and there sometimes. But but let me on that point, 
Sometimes we ask you to go on a home office visit because it allows us to help negotiate more money for you. When you go on a home office visit, I'm speaking to you as an advisor. When you go on a home office visit and you are you, right? And you are showing the firm, especially some senior leadership, if you have the opportunity to meet, meet with them, that you are the real deal, right? You are not just some run of the mill two or $3 million producer. You have a process, you have goals, you want to grow, you want different things. You, you want them to be wowed. So when you leave and the recruiter or the manager, whoever it is, goes back to senior leadership and says, we need to go a little bit over the top for this candidate, they go, yes, do it. Right. Because we want that guy or that gal, right? We want that team. Um, we had a, a, well, you you had a couple of female teams that we were working with and um, we got them to go down and they, the leadership at these firms fell in love with them. Right. They got to know them right. more than just on the surface, on a page of numbers. More than just T12 and AUM. Right. right. They got to know them from so many different angles. Right. And we were able to- um, We have more get, leverage. We, right. We were able to get, get a better deal structure for them. So it's really important that you do that, which is why we wanted to do this again. So- um, but if you have any questions about whether you should be going on a trip or not, wh- how you should structure it or whatever. And what to uh, ask while you're there. What what to ask, exactly. What to ask, what to look for. Uh, you're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. And well, that's actually a, an interesting point because I actually had a candidate blow up an uh, opportunity for themselves <laughs> because they were a jerk when they went to the, yeah. they were a big, 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 big advisor, that's like 10 million bucks. Um, and I said to this person, listen, when you go here, and it was Raymond James, when you go to Raymond James, they are interviewing you just as much as you are interviewing them. And it's really important. They they don't they they don't need you. Like they don't, they're looking for the right fit, which is what I admire about Raymond James. And he went and he complained about not being in first class and not getting a limo to pick him up, even oh, though my gosh. even though he's now well, Tosh Elwin, he was the divisional director at the time. Now he's the president of um, RJFS, uh, picked him up at the airport in his own car. Wow. Like, that's like, a personal touch. That's, that's a personal cult- touch. That's the culture that- He was pissed off that he didn't get picked up right. in a limo. Right. <laughs> and then, and then uh, you know, and I, after the visit and all that, I, I talked with Tosh and Tosh was like, yeah, this guy was a jerk. And I said, I told him. Yeah, so it works both ways. Works both ways. Right, um, right. You know, if you're a four or five million dollar producer, you're not the only four or five million dollar producer. There's a lot of you. Um, I know I, I don't sound want to mean to sound coy, no, but, but you know they're just, interviewing you just like you're interviewing them. Right. Be Same humble, thing. talk about your practice, talk about what you're trying to get accomplished, talk about why you're making the move. I would not be throwing your firm under the bus. All, like just talk about why you're making the move, right? And what you're trying to get accomplished with the new firm. Um, because if you're coming from certain firms that lose a lot of advisors, everybody knows why you're leaving, right? You don't have to sort of reiterate the points. They know. Right. Um, so, but it's an interview. It's worth your time. Um, if you're in that process, you should definitely um, take it, take them up on the offer. If you are a firm and you're recruiting and you do not have a home office visit process in place, you need to get one in place because it can be a separate or it can be the difference between winning and losing a deal. And candidly, winning a deal and not paying as much money because- they might love your culture so much right. that they're willing to take a little bit less money. Because in the end, you know, 10 years from now, you still have to be happy with those people. So right. vet that out up front. Absolutely. The money always works itself out. Money will work it all, itself we, out. It, and, and we help with that too. So. Well, and, but listen, if you get a, if you go to a firm because you got a little more money, but then you get there and the firm culture is not what you want and you're not happy. The money won't the matter. The money won't matter. Money will not matter. You probably actually make less money because you won't be you'll do less production because you're just not going to be happy and excited. Right. So then you anyway. have to go through it again. Anyway, so that's it for us. If you have any questions about home office visits and you want to talk about uh, doing one, you want to talk about a transition, you can always uh, give this uh, fine young lady a call. Uh, <laughs> young? Uh, we were talking about RH before. Anyway, um, my number? email is stacy at eliteconsultingpartners.com. Stacy, don't forget the E. The number is 856-816-6322. And you are. And you can also DM me. Who are at, you? I don't know who I am uh, today. I don't know. I was out late last night, so I'm not really sure right now. Um, but uh, I wasn't drinking all that much. But just was right. a, a late know. night for me. We know. Um, anyway, so you can uh, check out my Instagram account, uh, which is Frank Elite. You can DM me there, or you can shoot me an email at Frank at ElitePartners.com. You can always, obviously, give me a call at eight five six three one six four six five one. And uh, thank you for joining. 
If you uh, are thinking about making a move, give us a call. If you know of somebody that's thinking about making a move, you know, just share this video with them. It might help them. You never know. We have a ton of podcasts on our podcast channel on our website, which is EliteConsultingPartners.com. Uh, there's a whole page there for um, all of the podcasts that we we did. There's a little bit of, there's a search search piece. You can go in there and search different things. So, um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot for joining. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to Advisor Talk with Frank LaRosa. If you're looking for more advice or solutions on any topics in the financial services industry, or you just want to subscribe to our podcast, head on over to EliteConsultingPartners.com slash podcasts.